you want to maximize the number of users for your NPM package, it needs to support both ECMAScript modules, aka ESM, and CommonJS modules, aka CJS. The question then is, how do you do that? First, you'll want to avoid defining the type property and setting that to module in your package JSON file for libraries that wish to support both ESM and CJS. Otherwise, doing so will set your package to explicitly target ESM projects only. When your package does set type module, you'll need to set the main property in your package JSON as well. If you don't and another project attempts to consume your package, you'll be presented with an error indicating the package cannot be found. Let me show you how that works. All right, for demonstration purposes, we have this repository that you can take a look at, fork it, copy it, try it out yourself so you can follow along as well. But getting right into it, we have the library, which is a function that's just doing add, and it's exporting that as math.add. And then we have a consumer, an ESM-based library or project rather, that's going to consume our library is what I meant to say. And then a CJS-based project that's going to require our library like this versus the ESM one, which is going to import it, okay? So with that said, to show you what that looks like with, let's say I define my package JSON for my library such that I have type module and there is no main function. So it's saying that I'm only targeting ESM for this package that I want people that are consuming this project. So if I come into an ESM based project and I try to consume that package JSON, which I've already npm installed math.add here, and I consume it like this, when I go to run my project and I go node server.js, I get the error message, cannot find package because it's unable to resolve it basically. Error module not found. And that's what happens when you do that. So basically if you want to target just ESM, make sure you add the main type like this and then point that to where your main file is, entry point for your ESM only based package. Speaking of the main property in package JSON, let's look into how it and the module property impact your NPM package support for both ESM and CJS. For CJS packages, the main property has been used to tell Node.js what file is the right one to start running things. You'd usually put something like server.js, app.js, or index.js here. And if you don't put anything there and it's left out, then Node will look in the root of your project for any files based on those naming conventions. However, in order for your package to support both CJS and ESM, you'll need to leverage the module property in addition to the main property. Set the main property to your common JS supported entry file, and then the module property to your ESM supported entry file. And this is what those files look like. So here you'll see on line five, the main field set to my index.cjs file, which is for common JS, and then my module field set to the index.mjs for ESM based projects. And just to take a look at what those source files look like under the SRC folder, index.cjs, we're doing exports.add, which is the name of the function and assigning it to the function that we've defined on line one there. And then for the ESM based one, we do function add, we define that as well, and we just export the function itself directly like that. And that's the difference there. Notice the difference in the exports, by the way. While we're on the subject of exports, this is another property within your package JSON file that helps in supporting both ESM and CJS in your NPM package. This property defines what to export depending on how your package is being consumed by other projects. For each module type, you'll need to point to the correct entry point within your package. Here's an example. Notice now we have an exports field defined in the package JSON, and then within there we say the root directory essentially. And for projects that are going to use CommonJS and use the require approach, there we define the require to point to our CJS file. And for projects that are gonna be using ESM or import approach, we point to our MJS file. Last but certainly not least is if you're building your NPM package with TypeScript and you wanna provide type support to the consumers of your package, in this case, you'll leverage the types property within your package JSON file. To support this, first you'll need to set up a script and use a tool such as TSUP or TSUP to build your package code and generate the type definitions to support both ESM and CJS. Here's an example script for you to look at. So in this example, you'll notice I have under the scripts property, I have a build script and in there I'm using TSUP telling it to use, let's say I had an index.ts file to define here, format it for, this is the key, CJS and ESM, and then some other options that we have here to configure that whole process for us. And you can read more and find out more about this NPM package uh, via the NPM registry for TSUP, TSUP. Okay, and then what that will do is it's going to output my types to a certain folder, which is the disk folder. We'll talk about that in just a second. 
So you'll notice that I define my types there. I define where the module and main are going to be for CJS and ESM. And then the exports changes slightly a little bit where we add the types as well, all pointing to the disk folder, wherever you're outputting the TypeScript compilation files within the tools that you're using, in this case, TSUP. And that does it for supporting types and TypeScript for your NPM package. Now, if you're publishing packages for other developers and teams to use, you'll want to ensure the security and safety of your package. And you can feel confident in doing that with Sneak. Sneak monitors for security vulnerabilities in your package for you. It can detect, alert, and help fix vulnerabilities in your code and open source dependencies. Let's take a look at how to get started with that right now. First, if you don't have an account already, you're going to want to sign up and you can do that by going to sneak.io and you can click the sign up button, which will bring you over here where you can sign up with a GitHub account, a Google account, and a few other options that you would like. And then once you have an account, you'll be good to go. That's when I go over into my editor, which is VS Code, and I get the Sneak extension to start using it within the context of my development environment. So here you can go to the VS Code extension marketplace and search for that using Sneak term, and you want to install this particular extension. Then once you have the extension installed, you'll come over to the little Sneak icon here. It'll prompt you to sign in. You'll have to click a button, which will then open up your browser again to sign in and authorize that this extension within VS Code can use your account within VS Code. Once that's done, it'll say you can go back to VS Code and you'll come over here. And you'll be able to click the play button to scan for open source security dependencies and your own code security to see if Sneak finds any vulnerabilities in there. Now, this particular project, I don't have any vulnerabilities in it, which is great. I'm happy to see that. But it'll also alert me to any vulnerabilities that might come up in the future for this project. So let's take a look at one that does have vulnerabilities so you get an idea of what that's like. I'm going to go back over to the Sneak website and that will be at app.sneak.io when you're logged in. And I've already added the project via GitHub for this Node Goof project here, Node.js Goof project, which is intentionally vulnerable. And in here, I'm using Docker for containers, package JSON for my open source dependencies, and then code analysis, which is the code that I wrote. And if I get out of the way really quick, you'll see that Sneak has detected quite a bit of vulnerabilities in here, again, intentionally for this project, but it has 12 critical, some high, medium, and low for the Docker file that I have. My package JSON has some as well, and my code itself. Now what I can do is I can learn more about those vulnerabilities and learn how to fix them with Sneak by either updating the package or learning how to fix my code, that type of thing, so that I can remove a lot of these vulnerabilities and make my project safer. And again, it will also alert me to any future vulnerabilities that pop up based on my project dependencies. That way, anybody that's consuming my package, let's say, they can feel confident that I'm taking security as a priority in the project. And that does it for how to get started with Sneak in your NPM package. Remember, the JavaScript ecosystem is evolving and keeping your packages compatible with both ESM and CJS is crucial for reaching a wider audience. So let's summarize the key takeaways for building a dual compatible NPM package. Number one, you're going to avoid using that type field and setting it to module in your package JSON. Number two, you're going to use the main and module fields or properties in the package JSON to define the entry points relative to CJS, CommonJS, and ESM. Okay. And three, use exports to export the proper file for CJS and ESM scenarios. Number four, you're going to point your types property to your TS types output that's created by your build script if you're using TypeScript and supporting that in your package. And last but not least, you're going to use Sneak to keep your package secure. That does it for this video. But before we go, have you built an NPM package before? If so, share it down below in the comments. If you got value out of this video, be sure to like it down below and share it with a colleague who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding. Everybody.